Okay, little restart here. 2.10 p.m. Monday, March 8th. Manic Monday in the markets. What's in your wallet? So anyway, let's jump right into it. Let's jump right into the restart here. So... As you see here, we're looking at S&P 500 chart from this morning where she was a little choppy there right at the open. And then we got up pretty big. We got up uh, nearly 40 some points on the S&P 500. Uh, but look at that little uh, sell off here in the last hour, dropping almost 30 points, uh, getting right to a mid pivot level and almost to the opening range. Uh, from this morning, but she bounced off that right off it actually that that mid level between the mid pivot and the R1, and now she's shown a little test here, the 50 period moving average on the one minute. Um, so volatility has certainly picked up with swings like that, a 30 point swing there in less than an hour. So things are very choppy. Overall, it's a pretty good day. We're looking at advancers on the New York up 14 to 8. Excuse me, 8 to 6 over uh, advancers over decliners on NASI. Uh, opposite picture, we got 1,300 decliners to 500 some advancers. Uh, NASDAQ just has not been able to get out of the gutter. Uh, here today uh, she's been down all day and that's pretty much carrying over the theme from last week with all the tech getting hit biotech getting hit uh, te tech stocks are just out of favor right now and the move is into the value plays the value plays the dividend payers um, bank stocks financials higher interest rates higher interest rates favoring all the financials uh, in fact, today, regional banking, number two spider sector, up 2.75%, uh, as you see here. Uh, bank ETF, 2.5%. Uh, how about the XLF? XLF up one and three quarters percent. So uh, financials pretty much in the top 10. Uh, the surprise uh, is today retail. Retail having a great day, up 5.5%. On spider retail if we look at some of the stocks in that now the problem is is uh, GameStop GameStop's in that stock that stocks are uh, just doing all kinds of crazy things again today up $46 to 184 got up to as high as 210 around 1230 so the madness uh, continues on GameStop and I guess for some of you gamblers you risk takers you want to jump down on the roulette wheel and get on that GameStop with all that activity, I suppose. Have at it. 50 million shares trading today. Not for me. Not for me. That's not where I want to be in that GameStop. But uh, uh, retail overall, uh, how about Abercrombie? Abercrombie Fitch up 9.5%. Look at that. Just a steady accumulation all day long to the upside. Um, next on that list, 8.9%, Hibbit Sports, um, HZO Marine Max, you know, so retailers, retailers all 5, 6, 7, 8, 9% gainers there in that Spider Retail ETF, with some in the red, some in the red, but uh, for the most part, the benchmarks like uh, Walmart, Target, AutoZone, you know, 1%, 2% gainers on the day. You know, the real benchmarks. How about Amazon? Amazon flat on the day. Amazon's flat on the day. But, you know, thinking there is uh, we're coming out of the pandemic. We've got some crazy states want to go reopen, reopen some parts and kind of try to force that get back to normal state. But I suppose if you look out a little bit, 
of time on retail. It makes sense that uh, the sector is going to recover. I mean, people are still spending money. They're shopping online. Uh, the group overall, you know, fundamentally, there's not really any kind of major headwinds uh, to think that this sector wouldn't continue. And I suppose if you look out on the daily, on the daily here on, on Spider Retail, I mean, right from the pandemic lows, she just uh, hasn't looked back. I uh, had that big pop here at the end of January, and she hasn't quite taken out those highs, but uh, retail retail is just a good play uh, across the board uh, for, for quite, quite a long time since the pandemic low. Of course, all the banks and financials moving up with the interest rate story. Uh, what is pretty much on the downside, as you know, are these, these tech plays. Now, at some point, uh, these tech, these semiconductor, semiconductor group, uh, internet ETFs, select technology. I mean, they're all at levels, you know, below their 50-day moving average right now. And, you know, they're starting to get to near attractive levels, you know, especially if you're someone who's kind of a methodical, you know, cost average, uh, cash accumulate type investor where you're constantly throwing money into uh, the investment account that you have, and so you're always constantly doing some sort of cost averaging strategy. No doubt about it, if you're just entering uh, at this point in the market, uh, you know, this is one of the first levels, sure, you take some shots. You're somewhat of a, you know, standard deviation off that 50-day moving average at this point uh, on the downside. Right now, it looks like you're, you know, you're bouncing off Friday, off that 200-day moving average. So it's getting at a level where, sure, why not, you know, take a little piece of it here. Personally, I think there's probably going to be a little more weakness uh, to come uh, coming up, so there'll probably be better levels. But there's nothing wrong with taking taking a few shots here. I took a couple shots, not on the retail, not on biotech, not in tech. Uh, I've been taking some shots on some other stuff. Actually, I did. I, I did grab into one of my biotech plays here earlier today with uh, a few option contracts on it, and that's just a stock that I've been trading for a while. I'm not going to get into too much detail on it right here, but, um, you know, again, overall tech sector software, software and services, so there you go, down below the 50, uh, right around its mid-pivot point right now, so... Uh, always a pretty decent level there, but I think she's got a little more to go. But she is at kind of a uh, important support level here. If you go back to the beginning of the year, um, uh, place where for she bounced off of it at one point. Uh, but I just think it's too soon. Market's very choppy at these levels. I mean, come on, S and P dropping 30 points uh, in an hour. I mean, that's a that's a big move. Um, so the market's delicate here, and as you see, she's starting to fail right away here at this one minute on the 50 period moving average on the one minute, looking like she wants to go grab uh, grab those lows here, afternoon lows. So, you know, you just want to kind of be careful on some of these things. Now, uh, what I'm going to do here in the midday, the midday section, uh, so because I got cut off on my broadcast, uh, a pre-market. I was talking about a couple of stocks, and I'm going to get into them again. One of them I added to my watch list, so I'm going to do it again here. And I want to talk about this uh, Waiter Holdings. Uh, this is a little nothing $3 stock. But the company is big into you know f uh, food delivery. Um with exposure in uh, several states, several cities, uh, the company announced uh, a couple days back that they were going to get into um, the cannabis market, so delivering cannabis products. Now, that's interesting to me, okay? In fact, let me just add her right now uh, to added to watch list because I want to get this on the record here. So let's just paint that. Paint that as the first stock uh, that we're talking about for the day. So there it is right there. Now the name Lynn Cadia Holdings, that's an older name. Uh, the database just isn't updating on it. It's actually called Waiter Holdings right now. Uh, so just to be clear on that, um, 
Uh, Land Katie was its old name before they decided to change it. Uh, so it's actually, I mean, I could actually just kind of paste it in here, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. I'll just get up here on the chart where I have the correct name. W-T-R-H. So again, getting back to this story here. So I want to start off on the fundamental side of things. So the company has about 76 million shares out in the float, 110 million outstanding altogether. <clears throat> uh, they're doing about 200 million a year in revenue. And it's been kind of a slow, steady increase, improving story here. And in fact, I'm going to pull up this little chart here actually no let me do this one first let's do this one first this is the trailing 12 months revenue and earnings picture and as you can see improving over the last four quarters uh, and even on the earnings side of things I mean a, a big jump to the point at which uh, she actually that's on the trailing 12 month side of things but if you go quarter of quarter she's just just barely breaking into the profit zone right now. Now this is the picture going back three, four quarters in a company in the middle of the pandemic doing food deliveries, which is you know right in line with the type of company that did do well through the pandemic. But I don't think I've come across a company that's big on food delivery or deli any delivery for that matter that's actually made an announcement that they're going into the cannabis space for deliveries. So that is really interesting to me uh, uh, a story because, again, you just don't hear about it that often. So that was the news here about uh, two days ago. And the reason why it jumped uh, here late Friday, and there you see there on Thursday, that, that big jump on Thursday. Okay. Now... Sticking with the fundamental uh, story for a moment, also, now, even though those little graphs that I showed you on their uh, quarterly financials, revenue, and uh, earnings, uh, keep in mind that year over year, okay, year over year, earnings per share were up 97%. Now, last quarter, last quarter, 101% on EPS. Quarter before that, 131%. And the revenue picture year over year is about an 18% gain. So a lot of good things there on the fundamental side of things. you know. And because she's not quite profitable, my ranking is still down around the 50-60 mark uh, on my rankings for fundamentals. Uh, but what is strong is the power rank and timeliness rank here of this stock. And in fact, let me see, can I pull up my ranks here? I'll just kind of show you what I'm talking about. So you see here, see my power rank, my power rank, and my timeliness rank. I mean, timeliness at 99.4, power rank at 95. So those two ranks are based on a combination of indicators and formulations that I have uh, that's more of a short-term indicator of uh, what company is doing overall in terms of volume, uh, price action, RSI, you know, it's, it's, it's just a combination of things, and it's pretty strong there on those particular rankings. All right, now, the longer-term technical rank, I mean, if you stretch out on this thing over on the daily, okay, I mean, look at where she's, she came up from, from late 2019, early 2020. She came up from the penny level, from the penny level, 30, 40, 50 cents a share, up to 340 so you know almost a six seven eight hundred percent gain uh you know delivering food okay so obviously from the march pandemic low that's when she really broke out okay got up into these levels here over the last six months trading in that range between 250 and four and here just recently in these last few days now, if I come out here to an hourly, you see the little spike up here breaking out of this range, and that's on that cannabis announcement. So, Waiter Holdings, she's getting added to my watch list, all right, and probably just a good level to just go ahead and start speculating on right here. Uh, when it goes on to my watch list, 
Then I start adding some conditions before she moves over to a position list or a trade list. Uh, but still, going on to the watch list, that means I like. I like the story overall. So even if you still want to just jump in, grab it or whatever, that's all up to you. Uh, but very interesting story here with some pretty decent fundamentals backing it up. Very cheap stock. I mean, $3 a share. Uh, trading on NASDAQ. So we'll see uh, what kind of impact she has in the whole cannabis space uh, coming up here. All right. Uh, how about this one? Uh, a top mover today. Uh, Greenwich Life Sciences. Get that on the list. Greenwich Life Sciences is GLSI. GLSI. Okay, so we'll add that here onto the list, Greenwich Life Sciences, and we'll move over to the chart, GLSI. So uh, story there, stock is up nearly 50-some percent on the day, was up much higher. In fact, oh, that's on the hourly. Let's get down to the five here. Let's get down to the five. So right here, uh, right from the open, she really got, got some steam there around 1 o'clock. Um, stock was halted, uh, volatility, uh, but they, uh, basically are getting to a stage in a phase three trial here. Putting out a press release, uh, Basically saying, okay, they're involved in over 200 clinical trials, um, and they've got a uh, management change coming in um, on a phase three clinical trial for recurring breast cancer. Uh, and so the street like this news, sending the shares higher. So besides uh, being involved in several trials they're basically saying that uh, they're ready to move on on a phase three uh, trial on breast cancer so the stock doing very well here get the volume push around one o'clock I mean jumping to 50 and then coming back to 35 I mean you know that's a almost a 50 percent retracement uh, but she seems to be kind of holding right here at this level right now which is the 50 period moving average on the five. So could be a good level there, but I just figured I'd throw that on the list because it is a top mover up on the day. Uh, next on the list, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, Select Comfort SNBR. Now, the reason why this is getting highlighted right now, this is one of my screen stocks from over the weekend. In fact, let me just adjust the time on this. Let's move this over as a screen spotlight. Boom. And let's send her through SNBR. So, sleep number. Okay. Having a nice day up 4.2%. Now, obviously, as I said, uh, this was a screen addition from uh, over the weekend. So, even from the open had you jumped on her uh, the reason why what screen is she a part of she's uh, part of what I call my core 95 screen and what that is is uh, basically if it's got the core ranks the core ranks of 95 or better on my overall fundamental and technical rank that's part of that screen um, so Sleep number pushing up 4.28% on the day. And in terms of news, let's see if she had any uh, news here over the last um, several days that's worth mentioning. Uh, but just while I'm looking up the news on her, just going to tell you uh, 99.8 on my overall rank, 96 on the fundamental rank, 96 on the technical rank. Uh, so core 95 screen. There was only one of them over the weekend. This was one of them. And while I just kind of take a look here on the news, 
Um, no news here except for some insider activity here uh, late last week. Um, just some insiders are uh, just trimming down positions after that push up. I mean, let's go and take a look here at the daily on sleep number. Uh, so you see this stock now going from uh, the March pandemic low right around that $15 level up to 136, so up almost 1,000% on the year, therefore getting the big rank uh, on my list, doing $1.9 billion in sales, $139 million in earnings with earnings per share year over year up about 80%. Uh, earnings per share in the latest, light, latest quarter coming in up 164%. Stock still only trading about 16 times earnings as, w as well, uh, with revenue over the last quarter coming up 30%. So sleep number, home furnishing, fixtures, pretty much you know the story through the pandemic, people investing in their homes. Um, that's where the money's getting spent, invested, so it's no surprise sleep number basically a betting maker uh, catching that bid now she did have that little sell off as you see there at the end of last week Friday had the comeback and now back maybe about a 50% 50, 50 retracement uh, from the low there and also holding that support level Okay, set back around uh, between the 16th and 22nd uh, so sleep number, uh, getting onto my list as a screen spotlight, um, Core 95 edition. All right. Now this next one, um, I know a little about because I've traded it uh, several times over the last few months. I haven't really touched it, though, when it had its big run. And I'll explain what I mean here in just a second. So this one's called Fulgent Genetic. So they are a testing, DNA testing company. And Fulton Genetic, uh, basically, um, so here's the story. Explosive growth, explosive growth off the COVID testing. Most of their contracts were on the East Coast and West Coast. Uh, New York schools, public schools, uh, they got uh, big contracts there. And then they were doing a lot of the the outdoor big COVID testing uh, centers in California. And the company was just killing it uh, there the last couple of quarters. I mean, seeing almost, you know, triple-digit gains, 164% gain on earnings per share over the last quarter, 90% in the prior quarter. Um, uh, revenues just going through the roof. I'll pull up the, the chart on the financials here in just a second. Uh, but... Uh, story here as we pull out to the chart on Fulgent Genetic um, company really had a big run so I was trading it here around the end of December okay. so around the end of December I was playing it in this uh, $30, $45 range and it was very defined trading range uh, to be playing it now I wanted to keep going with it but I got stuck in some other positions. So I missed this run here at the end of the year uh, from December. I had, you know, like 45 calls on it at that point. And I was really regretting it, especially when she broke out past 60. And then it was just a rocket ship. She got up to like 160 here uh, at the beginning of February. Then as the COVID numbers started dropping, uh, and it looks like things were getting a little more under control. Well, obviously, she had a big sell-off there of almost uh, $70, uh, probably figuring that, you know, the testing uh, pace was going to slow down. Uh, but here's the thing about this company. They reported earnings here, or, or, what was it, last week. And they still saw a 40-something percent gain on non-COVID related testing. So what happened was there was a, a, a carryover effect um, for their other core testing business 
Um, and it was really just because of the exposure they were getting on the COVID testing. So a lot of the places they were hooking up with and getting these contracts or selling the selling the tests uh, are buying their other tests, okay, that um, are, are for other uh, use cases, not just COVID. So the stock here at this uh, mid-90, $100 level, and right around its 50-day moving average really is not a bad level. Now, even if you think COVID's going to keep on getting better uh, in terms of the um, you know, the whole story there and COVID testing slows down. Well, the company's got other good things going for it now because they've gotten themselves in a pretty decent cash position, pretty good, pretty decent valuation uh, position. Um, you know, they're able to expand on some of their other product lines. So Fulgent Genetics uh, is a very interesting stock at these levels. And you always want to you know, try to grab on a pullback. And, you know, as I've said, tech uh, overall, uh, general tech, biotech, uh, they've been getting hit uh, in this little mini correction that we have going on. So now things are getting towards pretty good levels. Fulgent Genetics is one of them. Very high beta stock, though. Uh, you got to be a little careful on, on where you actually do your entries. That's why it's probably good to use a lot of these pivot levels. Uh, here to determine some of your entries and exits, and we'll see how she reacts. So you see there, uh, two days ago, f uh, Friday, March 5th, got right up to that R1 pivot, uh, then sold off from there, got down, pretty much held between the mid-pivot and S1 level two times and bounced right off that level. I mean, that was like pinpoint. You see how these mid-levels and between the pivots, too, she's reacting? Uh, so, you know, the, the pivot points are pretty strong, usually on everything, but a very, very defined look that you can see here going on on Fulgent Genetic. So even at the $98 level coming off this mid-pivot level here, it's probably a pretty good level. Market's so strong today, though, I'd probably be a little cautious, but... Um, I wanted to highlight this one because it is from my core 80 screens. And 80 is is almost the same as the core 95, except uh, these are stocks that are, uh, excuse me, core 90, core 90. Uh, these are 90 or better on my core rankings. Uh, and Fulgent Genetic is one of those. Okay. In fact, I'll pull up the ranks just so you can see real quick. So right here, we've got overall rank 99.7, fundamental rank 93, technical rank 97, uh, volume rank 98, that means volume's coming in to confirm it, power rank 98, timeliness rank 98, I mean it's just 90 across the board here on Fulgent Genetic. Um, and you know what I probably should do, because I don't have her on my watch list even though I've been all over this sucker. I'm going to go ahead and add her to the watch list too, just so we can get it official here in the record as we're doing these new segments, going out over that Echofin uh, channel, over that Echofin platform. Uh, my new partners, my new buddies there over in Greece, living the good life. Um, let's get it on the record. Let's get it on the record with the full gent. Taking just a moment here. There she is. Now let's add her to the watch list. So right behind the screen spotlight. There we go. Adding her to the watch list. By the way, uh, the reason why I'm a little particular about doing these timestamps and stuff like that is because when you go to the replays on these channels that I'm posting up on the YouTube channel and stuff like that, you're going to see the timestamps there. So you don't have to actually sit through, excuse me, sit through an entire video. Uh, you can actually just click on the links and skip right through the video to see what I was talking about, uh, whatever stock symbols that you may recognize. 
Uh, how about another core uh, 90? But no, China company. I don't like doing the China companies. What's next here? Next here. How about Boston Beer? Boston Beer, Core 80. Do we want to talk about that? Let's talk about Boston Beer for a minute. Let's see what's going on. See, this is one of those stocks that's probably smart play on the consumer staple side, alcohol. See, as, we, as the market's moving from the growth stocks to the value stocks, these are the kind of companies like a Boston Beer, you know, consumer defensive play. Uh, that are probably going to do uh, do pretty well. Now, obviously, here we're seeing here that she's down 2.4% on the day. But, uh, wow, what a nice run she had here from the third and fourth last week when the market sold off. It was a complete 100% retracement, getting back up to this level and kind of bouncing off that resistance level. So probably a little bit better level you can probably grab in in here. That's why I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. But it is one of those defensive plays, Boston Beer. And I have been taking the cautious, conservative tone here lately on a lot of my uh, comments, my analysis, my 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 take, my, my, my trader mojo, my spidey sense telling you, take it slow. Take it slow right now. What are we doing right now? So we're up 500 points on the Dow. 500 points here. Looking at that five minute. Showing a little crack there at the top though here at the one o'clock hour. And we're up 15 points on the S&P. And that NASI, NASI is still negative on the day. So I don't know. Here we are, 242. About an hour and 15 minutes to go before the close. I'll be back here um, right around 7, 8 o'clock tonight. Do a little wrap-up. Look at some of the bigger movers of the day. Earnings releases. Some analyst comments. A little more extended session we'll do tonight. Uh, but I wanted to jump in here midday here in the 2 o'clock hour. Just kind of give my take on where we're at right now. And just cover a couple of instruments anyway. Just get a couple on the list. A couple on the time stamps. Um, but I will, uh, just kind of leave you with this. Uh, I do not think we've seen our lows here in this correction. I think the correction's full on. I mean, hell, if we go to the 10 year treasury, let's take a look at the 10 year treasury. So there you go. I mean, we're just off the highs on interest rates right there at 1.59. looks like she cracked 1.60 again today. Um, I mean, that's going to put pressure on these markets. That's just the way it is, you know, higher interest rates. Um, you know, I suppose the only way uh, to really kind of, you know, respond to that is, you know, kind of stick with those financials, you know, stick with the financials. You know, they're going to benefit from all that. Uh, I think you might see some other things going on in here, too, like the metals and minings, the utilities, um, transportation. Uh, you know, I think that all points telecom. Look at that telecom number two on the list. You know, that's all pointing towards the infrastructure play. I think the infrastructure play is going to be getting a lot of steam, a lot of momentum behind it here uh, over these next several weeks because, I mean, where's the next money Dems can spend money right now? Okay, well, they're going to start talking infrastructure, you know, which is probably, you know, just as important as COVID relief. But um, that'll kind of go with the trend you know, if, uh, if we're looking at uh, interest rates pushing up against us and uh, probably would be good to stay on the conservative side of things, go after some of those yield plays, some of those dividend payers, some of those consumer staples on the conservative side. But, you know, get strategic. Get strategic with what you're looking at right now. That's very important, okay? Um, you know, because, look, this isn't going to be like 2020, Okay, where everything's just a straight line up. This isn't going to be like the last 10 years. We got interest rates now, you know, that were never a worry, never a problem over the last 10 years. Now, all of a sudden, they're coming into the picture. So that's going to be making these markets much more challenging. And for a lot of you newbies, you know, you haven't seen it yet. You just you just figure, ah, oh, it just always goes up. I'm going to just keep buying because it just always goes up. No, it doesn't work like that. Okay, we're getting into we're getting into, you know, the 
the zone now where you know you you, you got to do your homework you know you got to have you know good methodology behind what you're doing because it's not just going to be a free for all everything going up it's not going to be like these game stoppers what is that stupid GameStop going on right now? Let's just take a look here just so we can feel like we're part of it. Uh, 45, 183. And what is it up today? Oh, 33%. Okay. You know, 33% up, 50% down. You want to play that kind of game? Psh, have at it. That's not for me. Uh, so anyway... Back tonight, somewhere around 7, 8 o'clock for post-market wrap-up. Uh, we'll get this posted up on the YouTube channel, and we'll see you on the next episode.